हरि ओम टुडे वी नो डिफरेंट फेसेस ऑफ योगा डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ योगा डिफरेंट बेनिफिट्स ऑफ योगा एंड डिफरेंट स्टाइल्स ऑफ योगा एज वेल विद डिफरेंट नेम्स बट अल्टीमेटली योगा इज योगा योगा इज वन योगा इज वेरी हेल्पफुल फॉर ऑल स्टूडेंट्स स्पोर्ट्समैन सोल्जर्स सर्विसमैन टीचर्स वर्कमैन पोलिटिशियंस डॉक्टर्स एस्ट्रोनट्स एंड हु नॉट एवरीबडी मैन और वुमेन यंग और ओल्ड has the right to take maximum benefits of yoga for perfect gains in life we know different introductions yoga for health yoga for uh, fitness yoga for cure as a remedy to different ailments yoga for social harmony this way also we have different aspects of yoga and with the beginning of international day of yoga 8 years back now we are going to celebrate 8th international day of yoga and this year we are dealing it with different theme and the theme given by our yogi prime minister a globally known yogi now mr narendra modi he has initiated he wanted to initiate eighth international day of yoga as yoga for humanity in last 7 years we have been focusing on different aspects basically the health aspect rather physical and mental health aspect of yoga has been popularized a lot and this was true because every man every being has his first love for his own health he wants to stay fit he wants to stay alert he wants to look smart and long lived so when they found that yoga can cure all our problems it can give us a free a light a healthy smart and meaningful life then why won't they love it people embraced yoga with open heart and wider hands but that's not all so the new theme is given that yoga is not just that it's a journey in itself from body to mind from society to self for in from individual to absolute <clears throat> from person to universe and from atman to paramatman <clears throat> for knowing this introduction the humanitarian aspect of yoga should be understood with this declaration of yoga for humanity <clears throat> people will be curious to learn about it because by this time it has been known as a tool to fitness just to reduce our medical budgets to bless us with a tens free 
light life, joyful life. But it has its concern with humanity also. For this will have to peep into other aspects which have yet been ignored. We knew a good diet, we knew a yoga workout for every day, for morning evening schedules. But the two main aspects of yoga, they were yama and niyamas. They were ignored because they were not a part of, a declared part of yogic schedule. Now we'll have to learn about them. We'll have to learn the art of coexistence. We'll have to learn the art of love and loveful living. The art of tolerance. The art of living in togetherness. The art of living free of violence. The art of living for others. These basic ethics and over and above all, the art of peeping into ourself instead of blaming others, we have to find something within us and that is Swadhyaya. Learning the texts related yoga and spirituality and then to learn about ourselves that is possible through meditation. So in these seven years, we have moved ahead towards body to mind, matter to spirituality. If we learn it, then only we can learn the utility, the importance of yoga for humanity. Today, humanity is at threat. We see the worldwide tension. We see the selfishness of the countries. We see the tendency of encroaching upon others' rights. We see the use of missiles and bombs. Is this a spiritual society? We may belong to any faith. We may follow any great soul. But if we do not apply their teachings to our life, then they are not meaningful for us. And yoga has been the art of life that can be joined by all without any discrimination. A Hindu, a Christian, a Mohammedan, whatsoever may he or she be, if he or she wants to learn the art of spirituality, the le to learn the ten ethics of religious life, which are equally applicable on all faiths, they'll have to go deeper into yoga. And it depends on our mental health. By now, we have been learning about physical health. But I choose this topic, yoga for mental health, only because I want to tell you on the basis of my experience that yoga is not just that. Whatsoever is the condition of our mind, whatsoever is the level of our thought process, whatsoever is the level of our ethics of life, that affects rest of our life. 
even physical health is not only having a healthy food, taking a good balanced exercise, early rising or so. Two persons of same application of systems, food, exercise, daily schedule, their achievements are different. One achieves a lot in minimum time, whereas the other one with same practices has no good results because the mental situation of both the persons is different. Perhaps this was the reason that Maharshi Patanjali who gave us the first text of yoga namely Yoga Sutra. He focused not on asanas. He did not even mention the names of asanas. He simply said asana, asthira, sukham, asanam, not more than that. It was me. It were other yogis who worked on what asana is and how many types of asanas can be practiced. The principle of asana was explored by yogis after Maharshi Patanjali. Then so many names of asanas were introduced, several groups of asanas were introduced and even today the process is on. Because initially when Lord Shiva introduced yoga asanas, I am not saying about perfect yoga, just a part was introduced to Ma Parvati. He says, asanas samastani yavanto jiva jantava. Chaturshiti Lakshani Shivena Kathitam Pura. Asanas are numerous in number, they are 84 lakhs. So, whatsoever we are experiencing today and giving it name of asanas, it can be asana only if it fits to the basic definition of asana, asthira, sukham, asana. They are useful to men, they will continue to be useful to men forever. But Patanjali did not emphasize on different names and different benefits or merits and demerits of asanas. He simply took asana to be a tool to pranayama and meditation. It was just a step to self. In eightfold yoga, it is one of the eight folds. But overall, when he introduces yoga, he does not say that asana is yoga or meditation is yoga. Yes, ultimately it is experienced that yoga samadhi in the beginning he says yoga chitvratti nirodha controlling and balancing or chitvrattis now when we speak about mental aspects of yoga we have to and we should know what is chitta Chitta refers to different levels of being. Sometimes we call mind the chitta. And with deeper practices, sometimes we mind buddhi, the chitta. 
sometime we call ego ahankara the chitta and later when we still go deeper we find and we mention self pure self as chitta so understanding and exploring widening the introduction of self is understanding of self it is chitta controlling balancing and modifying the vrittis has been the goal of yoga practice because it gives us the vision to understand the real introduction of chitta and once the chitta is balanced and positive it affects each and every aspect of human life it affects our body it affects our likes and dislikes it affects the life force within us and finally it affects the ultimate goal of our life there are so many people who live only for a couple of coins there are people who live only for sensory joys there are people who live only for pride and prejudices just because they have a limited introduction of life a limited face of their life they fail to recognize the limitless being within us if we do not have a thirst to go into that real being then we somehow insult the philosophy of yoga we somehow confine the powers of yoga only up to physical fitness or releasing mental tensions or adding joy to our life they will understand the difference between joy and bliss only after having proper introduction of yoga for proper understanding of yoga and its application its practice in our everyday life we have to learn that we are a combination of three body mind and chitta that i have just discussed with you that it has different levels of realization we sometime call it soul as well body is visible it has its significance in our worldly life as well as as a tool to spiritual life so it is necessary to keep it fit as we have to keep our vehicle okay for moving further for reaching all our destinations body is not less important but the irony is that we are uh, confined only to body because through body only we can have the joy of senses 
our mind enjoys things touch taste smell howsoever but uh, the source is our five karmendriyas and gyanendriyas with regular practice not only of asanas but of different feats of yoga we start our journey towards ourselves and the outer journey is seized somehow up to some extent in the beginning and up to death and depth of performance of these indriyas i am calling the word death because uh, kabir saint kabir because death means losing the existence memanta man mari re nanna kari kari peace he kills the mind because tat sankalpakam mana it is restless and it goes on discriminating things चित्तेश चलते संसारो निश्चले योग उच्चते वेन अवर माइंड इज एक्टिव दिस द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ दिस वर्ल्डली लाइफ एंड निश्चले योग उच्चते वेन दिस इज साइलेंट ही यूज इज द वर्ड किल Lee reaching up to no mind situation, it is there, but for a sadhak, its existence does not realized. My manta man mari re nanna kari kari peace. Sukshm kar diya jaye isko. it is to be reduced from a sthul existence to its micro the most micro status and then sukh paave sundari brahma jhalak ke sis then we have our introvert journey and brahma realization we call it god realization we call it sakshatkar we call it didar we call it vasla it is realized it is sparked somewhere and we do not intend to miss that that beauty to realize that enlightenment path for these achievements our tools should be strong enough alert enough capable to bear the pains and joys and after physical health when our mind is controlled and disciplined then we enjoy a good health and with that good health on the basis of that good health we aspire for deeper realization of joy or bliss mental health is somehow different because how to define it the unsharked mind undisturbed mind so strong that no vices can attract it that situation is a balanced situation 
when we speak of mind we generally touch our head my mind is restless today my mind is cool and calm because the activities of mind reflect later on your physical performance but in the beginning it reflects on your face on your forehead in your eyes and above mind when mind is almost okay though it is very tough in frictions of seconds there are modifications even there are failures any news can disturb the peace of this pond that we call mind for this calmness for this continued state of realization of truth our buddhi has to decide and buddhi is also a micro existence even more micro than mind because tatra ubhayatmakam mana mind is karmendriya and mind is gyanendriya as well so it is more restless and it is tough to bring it to position of rest of calmness and our buddhi which is a part of chitta which is a level of chitta we may say it helps in bringing this situation there are people who are mentally very strong but their buddhi level the wisdom level is so less that their mental power leads them and their acquaintances to destruction so it is our buddhi that has to guide and that buddhi can be attained balanced and strong with the practice of yoga we have different exercises i'm calling the word exercises because people know and love this word much truly speaking we have different practices because when we say exercise it somehow reflects of muscular structure muscular structure but when we speak about practice <clears throat> it has a wider sense so with different practices we control our brain our skull where all these faculties develop they live here because sahasrara is here in yogic definition agya chakra is here <clears throat> we have to learn how to control our this skull how to strengthen this buddhi tattva and our buddhi also depends on different other faculties of our skull if we operate our brain <coughs> our skull because brain lives in a skull then we find three parts one the frontal part then the middle part and then the rear part the back part 
and these parts are well known in biological language cerebellum cerebellum medulla they touch the memory part they touch the wisdom part they touch the balance part of our body of our existence even if we are blessed with wisdom wonderful wisdom but our mental balance is disturbed then that wisdom can't be applied properly we are intelligent we are wise but still we will lose somewhere so these parts of buddhi smriti santulan chintan these are touched with micro exercise system of yoga these are touched with pranayama these are touched with dhyana and these are touched with practices of focusing because without dhyana these exercises also may hurt us instead of strengthening our systems same way we have two parts <coughs> of our body right and left it's also to balance our capabilities our right part of brain is calculative brain no no creative brain because those generally who are left handers it speaks of their capability that they are more creative creative in sense that they may have their efficiency their skillness skillfulness in writing articles poetry developing different new formulas creativity is strong and the left part of our brain is calculative mind so to balance these two things creativity and our calculative capacity it balances us our nadi shodhana pranayama our bhramri pranayama our different mudras check the decaying process and put life to recovery process our buddhi may be sharp till last balanced till last creative till last and even the endocrine glands situated in this skull are also affected with these micro systems that no other exercise process of the world can touch even what to say of developing our mental health is very important but it is important and meaningful only if it leads us to our spiritual health for which practices of meditation and blessing of divine souls blessing of guru parampara play a very very important role 
because we have to kill the ego somewhere to reach the real self. It can be spoken very easily, but can be attained with dedicated and regular practice under the guidance of skilled masters. I am not saying that it is impossible. Mental health can be gained with these practices that I have mentioned here. The micro exercises of different parts, the pranayama in different styles, because it cannot be generalized that everybody can take benefit with this particular practice because the level of sadhaks are different. So, the master has to see after proper discussion, after proper observation that where do you stand. Then a program is designed for us by the master and then it is uh, observed. There is continuous observation whether we are moving on right track or not. So, we need a lot of patience as well. And finally, we have to understand that patience and regularity can create miracles in touching different dimensions of yoga. Once we are mentally fit and alert, we can certainly be enjoying a healthy and balanced life. Hari Om.